viewer question goes as follows. What will happen to the equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity of notebook computers if the number of colleges that require their students to buy a notebook computer increases at the same time as the number of firms producing notebook computers decreases? So we can examine this using our supply and de demand diagram and this notion of comparative statics or changes in equilibrium. What we notice here is that we have two separate effects going on. So we want to look at the effects one at a time, figure out for each of them whether it represents a change in supply or a change in demand, and figure out which way that effect is moving, and then put the two effects together. So let's think about the first effect, that being the schools requiring students to buy a notebook computer. Well, if the schools start requiring a purchase, we can think about the factors that influence supply and the factors that influence demand, and this would most likely fall under a factor of demand, namely tastes. Because by requiring the purchase of the notebook computer, you're artificially increasing the student's taste for the computers. So this first effect affects demand here. And then we can ask ourselves, is this going to serve to increase demand or is it going to serve to decrease demand? Well, if we're requiring a purchase, we're increasing taste for notebook computers or we're increasing demand. So our demand moves to the right and looks something like this here. And we can see that we're moving to the right in terms of quantity. Now let's think about the second effect. The second effect is that fewer companies are producing notebook computers. Well, we can think about whether that affects supply or demand. So one of the determinants of supply is number of firms. So it stands to reason that if the number of firms in a market goes down, then supply decreases. So that's going to shift our supply curve here. And it's going to shift it to the left because decreases are always to the left and increases are always to the right. So we're going to end up with something that looks like this. And again, we can think about how the equilibrium moves for each of these changes and then put them together. So our old equilibrium was here, just at the intersection of our original supply and demand curves. After we had the demand shift, our equilibrium moved to here. And then after we had our supply shift, our equilibrium moved to here. So what you can see is you have two effects, one which was up and to the right, or an increase in price and an increase in quantity, and one was the one that was up and to the left, which would be an increase in price and a decrease in quantity. It doesn't actually matter what order we think about the changes in. I could have first considered the supply shift, then the demand shift, and then we would just see, we would have had our shift in supply first, which would be an increase in price and a decrease in quantity. And then our increase in demand, which would have been an increase in price and an increase in quantity. Regardless of how we think about it, the point is that we go from this old point here to this new point here. It may be tempting, based on how I've drawn this diagram, to conclude that when we put these two changes together, we go from here to here and therefore get an increase in price and no change in quantity, because it looks like this point is at the same quantity as our original equilibrium. However, it's important to understand that this only looks this way because I've drawn the diagram in this specific way. So let's think about the qualitative effects and show why we actually can't determine what happens to quantity as a result of these two changes. So let's consider each of these in isolation. We said that when we had an increase in demand, that would be going from here to here, that our effect on price was that our P star goes up, and our effect on quantity is also that our Q star goes up. When we talked about the decrease in supply, we said that that results in a price increase, but a quantity decrease. So here, again, the decrease in supply causes P star to go up, 
but it causes Q star to go down. So if we put these two effects together, it's pretty clear that overall, well, we put a price increase together with another price increase, and we get price increase. However, on the quantity front, we put a quantity increase together with a quantity decrease, and the overall effect is ambiguous because we don't know quantitatively which one of these effects is bigger, so we don't know whether we're going to get an overall increase or decrease. To further clarify this point, I've drawn two more graphs that both also represent the scenario that we were talking about, namely an increase in demand coupled with a decrease in supply. And you'll notice here that the way I've drawn these result in different overall changes in equilibrium quantity. In the first example, we have a relatively large increase in demand and a relatively small decrease in supply. So that's overall going to give us an increase in our equilibrium quantity, as we can see graphically here. On the other hand, if we had a relatively small increase in demand and a relatively large decrease in supply, we're going to get the opposite effect on quantity. We're going to see the decrease in our equilibrium quantity as a result of these two effects together. So be careful when you're drawing your graphs. It's super tempting to just draw the changes of the same magnitude. But it's important to remember that that doesn't necessarily have to be the case. And you want to challenge yourself a little bit to say, could I have drawn this graph differently to have gotten a different effect?